Hey everyone, Ron Bessie here. Hey, I got a uh, kicker um, HS10 uh, subwoofer. It's an all-in-one enclosure type that you just slide under a seat. Uh, I needed more bass for the uh, RAM. It's got the um, Alpine system in it with the factory uh, amp, but it just didn't have enough bass. You know, it had good high tones and mid-ranges, but the bass just was just missing big time. So anyway, I put one of these in the Jeep Unlimited and threw it up underneath the uh, passenger seat. I got a different head, all new kicker speakers throughout, and then even put in the uh, pods up there on the roll bar. And, you know, it, it'll blow this thing out pretty good. Uh, obviously, it's not going to win awards or nothing, but, you know, compared to factory, factory is just horrible in this thing. So anyway, that's not bad. That's what's in the in the RAM. I just need a way more bass. So anyway, I'm gonna try to make this real quick uh, because I'm trying to figure out the speaker wiring colors and in, in these things is and the fifth generation is you know not a lot of fun to trace down and find that out. That clutch fields and then here's this uh, harness kit that you need. So it's A P H C H O three and that comes with uh, four harnesses these two I don't even use um, the other two one's just a bypass so that it shuts down some of the uh, microphones in the in the system because otherwise you'll get a horrible feedback if you don't plug it in and then the other one uh, comes with the wires all disconnected and let me head on out there and I'll show you what I'm talking about Okay, so I just threw the unit up underneath here. I got it Velcroed to this, you know, floor mat that I bought. Uh, nothing special about that. And then up underneath the uh, driver's seat is where your factory amp is. And so you got three plugs in here that you're unplugging. This plug here is the one that bypasses the, the microphones in that. And it doesn't interfere with, like if you get a, a phone call or something, uh, I got a phone call from somebody yesterday on the way to work and talked to him all the way to work, just normal tone. It didn't affect the, you know, your phone calls and stuff like that. So all it does is keep it from doing you know, this horrible loop feedback. Uh, this is the other harness that you get. And in this one, all these wires are disconnected from each other. So all you're doing is matching color to color hook them all together. Then you need some wires to come back to, to, for your inputs on the, uh, on the subwoofer. And this one has two inputs. So you got a left side and a right side, and then they come out as uh, the white with a, with a black stripe and then a gray with a black stripe. The blue one is, is a trigger that if you ran it all the way up to, you know, like an aftermarket head unit, it would turn this thing on. But if you put it in DC auto on, it'll automatically turn on as soon as it receives a signal from, from the speaker so you don't have to run the blue wire. The blue wire I just got tucked underneath there and it doesn't go to anything. Uh, ground wire is your other one. I got it hooked to my uh, seat frame. And if you look, it's got one of those Torx type bolts on there. And then this has got the adjustable back seat. So you had to shove it all the way back to expose that. And I found that if you just use a 10 millimeter uh, socket, it'll it'll take it right out, so you don't have to have the special uh, socket to get to that or take it out. And then I just put it put it on there, tighten it back down, and the ground was good, and I tested it. The red wire just run it all the way up up to the front, and then uh, up underneath the dash, there's a grommet uh, for where your emergency brake cable goes through, and you can just poke a hole with a screwdriver next to it and feed it on through. Yeah, let's see what else is there. Uh, that's really it. So all you got is a, basically you got a ground cable, power cable, and then you got the two feed lines, and then this is your remote base that you run that. I'll show that in a second up front. But the important thing is on this wiring harness is you've got a blue solid and a blue with a white stripe. Okay, and then I ran those to the to the uh, left side of the the white white wires on the on the on the um, subwoofer, and then they also say on here that it's speaker number five, and you know that's useful. Uh, 
So then I went to the purple, and then the purple with the black stripe, that's your ground, and then the purple solid, your positive, and then that says speaker number six. Uh, but anyway, I tested those disconnected with a 9-volt uh, battery just tapping it on the terminals, and I could hear that it was the factory subwoofer that's stuffed in behind that seat. And to get to that, you have to pull down that center armrest section, reach in behind there all the way over to the other side, and there's a little rope-like thing, a black rope that you pull down, and then that'll release that seat, and you can rock that forward. I'm not going to do it. It's a real pain. But anyway, that's how you get that open to, to get back to it. But that's that's the key that everybody has problems with is finding what wires to hook hook these things to. Some of these uh, systems only have just a single input wire, so you could pick a left or right channel and it wouldn't matter. You probably could just hooked up one of these and it wouldn't matter. It's just that because it's a stereo system, you may have more bass coming out of one side, one channel than the other. So I wanted them both hooked up, so that's why I went to the extra effort to figure out which one went to what. But anyway, both those wires, if you tap on them, it'll fire that that um, base in the back back there. So I knew it went to those. But anyway, ran that up. Settings on this thing real quick. Let's see. Auto turn on, I got it on, set on DC. Uh, input level, you definitely want it set on high coming off that amp so they got you know higher voltages than you know than something coming directly out of the head that's set up far uh, phase I got it at zero which means it's just normal left and rights are correct if it seems like it's out of phase you can flip that down and test it and see uh, bass boost you don't have to mess with that I turn it up just a little bit um, then your crossovers I got my crossover set this is 50 60 some a little bit about 65 uh, is where I set mine at uh, to go up to 120. Let let all the other speakers, you know, handle your mid ranges and all that. Then gain. What you want to do on gain is turn up everything that you got. So turn up your if you're going to use uh, this remote. Actually, best thing is before you start, just unplug that and leave it unplugged till you're done. Then you can plug it back in. So uh, what I do is then turn the head unit to full base, turn the, the volume knob all the way up, then adjust your gain. So that way you can't accidentally over, uh, over boost your your uh, um, head or your unit back here, uh, and then you know trash it. So what you want to do is turn up everything that you possibly can that'll put as much to the base as you can. Uh, dial this up till it starts to flutter. You'll see it'll it'll you know crank loud as hell, and then once it starts to fluttering effect, you're actually got too much going to it. Then you back it down a little bit until it's, you know, set where, hey, it's still sounding real good, but it's, um, you know, not, not overcharging the thing. Then when you set your bass back down to match your, uh, the tones of the rest of the music, uh, then everything's just gonna sound like it all works together. Now in time, uh, it's actually got a 15 amp fuse back here, and then this red wire up at the battery has another 15 amp fuse. Uh, so that way, you know, you don't, have some kind of a shark in between that and burn up the wire. You got a fuse up front and you got a fuse back here. There's just not a lot of power coming to these things, but they sound really good. So you don't have to have this, you know, great big giant uh, jumper cable wire running back to it. I, for me, I like to match everything. I like to every everything to have like a crisp, clean sound to it all more than I do a lot of punch. But this thing still, you know, blow this truck pretty good. So, and then. Uh, I just tuck it up underneath here so you know it's still still not blocked by a bunch of fabric or something and deaden it out. All right, put the seat back. Okay, and then my, I got the volume control knob mounted right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I'm gonna try to go up underneath there and see if you can see where, uh, where it came in. So anyway, I don't know if you can see my fingers up in there, but anyway, that's where I ran through this grommet. So it just runs through and goes up to the, just straight up and goes right up to the battery. And then it, the battery had just an uh, extra terminal on it, so I just mounted to that and then zip tied it and that was it. So anyway, 
not going to play it because it's not going to come across good on YouTube anyway, but just so everybody knows the wiring for this to simplify it and they can just, you know, slap one in and be done. Give a back view of the truck. Anyway, I hope this helped everybody and thanks for watching.